What's going on everybody? My name is Ian and welcome to another video of Iron Sculpt. Today I'm going to show you how you can create alphas using programs like Photoshop to detail your models in ZBrush. Let's go. Okay everybody, so in today's video we're walking through how to create an alpha in programs such as Photoshop. You can use Affinity or even GIMP if you do not have access to Photoshop. The process is relatively about the same. So what we're going to do is really do a glance over of how I did this and then I'm going to actually show you and you can follow along. I have resources that I tend to use a lot like pixels.com. They're not a sponsor, but anytime I need a texture of any type, I usually come here and then I'll type in like metal texture. And then when I hit enter, I come up with a lot of decent resources. And so you just kind of find a, vi uh, a photo that works best for you. And then you bring that into Photoshop, but we'll go over that in just one second. So the really quick overview is that we have brought our photo in and then I've generated a uh, black and white filter that we put over that because we don't want any color to uh, basically affect our texture. And then we uh, do a quick level adjustment and then we also do a little gradient with a black background. So we're going to go ahead and walk you through that and then from there I'll show you how to import it into ZBrush. Okay, so now we did an overview of how your alpha should look. We're going to go ahead and walk you through a step by step. In the description down below there will be a link to the files for resources if you would like to follow along. Or if you just have any old photo that you would like to test this out on, just go ahead and grab that photo and then follow along from here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by creating a new file. So come up to File and New. And what we want is a square format. For ZBrush resolution, as long as it's about 500 pixels wide and tall, that should be perfect. And the resolution, we're going to have that at about 150. Again, that's a great resolution to have for an alpha. It's not too high where it's a large file size, but it's also not too low where you'll see any type of uh, defracting or any type of anti-aliasing or any type of tearing of the image. So if it's at 72, that's what I mean. That's pretty low. I would stick that to about 150. And then under background contents, we want to stick this to black. If you have it set to transparent, that's fine too, because we could just go ahead and add a solid, solid color. But for here, we can go ahead and click uh, black for the background contents. And then if you like, go ahead and save that. Once you've done that, go ahead and hit create. And now you'll see here that we started with a black background and we can move forward with our image. Okay, now that we're set up in Photoshop, we're ready to start creating our alpha. From here, what we're gonna do is wherever you downloaded your photo, go ahead and drag and drop that into Photoshop. Now notice that the photo does not come in at the resolution that is desired. From here, we're able to scale this up because we are working with a decent resolution within Photoshop. We'll be able to scale this up without too much issue. Just go ahead and drag this up and rotate that to however you see fit. Just something that you think looks nice. From there, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. Now, right now, our photo is color. What we wanna do is make it black and white. All alphas are black and white. It's because of that contrast that will actually give us um, the resolution of the details within the file when we work on our models. Basically, the way you kind of want to think of alphas is anything that is white will generally be a positive additive of that alpha, and anything that is black will be negative, which means it will cut in. So what we want to do is get rid of the color, which can also add in artifacts that we don't want. Get rid of the color and then from there we'll go ahead and make our image really contrasty so that it gives us the best image possible when we're using it as an alpha. So from here we're going to go down to filters and we're going to pick black and white. Now I like to work with filters because generally uh, it's non-destructive, meaning that I can come back and make a change at any time and my original image is still untouched, which is nice. But we're going to go ahead and turn on the black and white filter. And we want to make some adjustments. Again, we're going for a really contrasty image. So heavy on the whites and basically crushing the blacks. So we're going to adjust. There was blue in this image. We're really going to pop up this blue. Really just going to make this white stand out like that. I'm going to drop the reds down a little bit and also the yellows. See if that affects anything. Maybe the greens. Doesn't seem to be doing too, too much, which is fine. Next thing we're going to do is come down to filters and we're going to grab a levels adjustment. And the levels adjustment is really going to make sure that we punch those uh, uh, punch those levels. So we're going to go ahead, hold Alt on the keyboard, and we're going to grab this slider and crush those blacks. If we let go of Alt, you can see here that it's just giving us a preview of what it is doing specifically to the blacks. And that looks pretty good right there. 
And we're gonna hold Alt and do the same thing on the white and really make sure that those pops. So now, as you can see before and after, this looks kind of flat. We're here, this is really punchy. Now, the last step we're gonna to wanna to do is actually make a gradient for the black background so that the alpha can fade. So when we go into ZBrush and we use it, it will actually drag out and you can kind of stack your alphas. So we're gonna go ahead and group everything and we're gonna hit Control G, which then will group everything into a folder. And you can name this if you want, we'll call this rocks, if I can spell, which I can't. And then we're gonna go ahead down here at the bottom and add a mask. We're gonna hit Control I, which will then invert that mask. From here, we'll hit B. And we want a capacity of 100, and then flow of 100 as well. And then we're just going to create a big soft brush. So we're just going to basically hold Alt, right click, just the size of that brush. And then from here, we can even bring some guides down if you would like, so we can get a better idea of the center line. Let that snap. And then we're just gonna go ahead and start painting white right in the middle. One, two clicks should be fine. And that will actually allow the image to then gradient out. Okay, so now that we have our alpha built in Photoshop, we're gonna go ahead and save this out and then we're gonna open it up in ZBrush. So I'm gonna come up to file and we're gonna go to save as, and then just find wherever you would like to save your alpha and then save it as a PSD. You can save it as a JPEG or a TIFF or a PNG, but at this point, it, I find it easier to use a PSD file because I can always come back and change it, and then I won't have multiple files of the same alpha. ZBrush will recognize PSD just fine, so might as well use that. Once you've done that, go ahead and hit Save. Yep. Now let's go ahead and open up ZBrush. Now that ZBrush is opened up, what we're going to do is I just have the default sphere here. Um, and the one thing I wanted to cover real quick before we import the alpha is that alphas generally need a high resolution model, something that's been subdivided up a few times. The more poly points you have um, or vertices that you have, the easier it is for that alpha to be recognized and show that detail, much like poly painting. So with the default sphere we have, the active points is 8,000. That's nowhere near enough you are going to be using this alpha generally in a higher resolution of like 2 million plus, depending on your model. So we're gonna go ahead and subdivide this up a few times. And I'll even show you what it looks like on the lower res. From here, just use the uh, standard brush. It's the perfect brush for using alphas. Also, you could change the stroke to drag rec, which is again, a perfect uh, stroke for using your alpha. And then come here to alpha, click on this and come to import and then find your new Photoshop file and click open. Now, if we were to uh, go ahead and drop the subdivision down to its base point of 8,000, and I drag this out, you can see here that it doesn't really look like anything. It's just kind of a mess. Um, so what we wanna do is, again, we'll subdivide that up to about 2 million, and then make sure your settings are, you know, whatever intensity you would like to work at. I usually go around 10 to 20, depending on what it is. And then I keep that as uh, the add, which is fine. And then we're just gonna go ahead and drag this out. And you can see there is our rock texture. If I hold Alt, I can cut into it. And the reason for the gradient is when I drag this out, you can see as it starts to stack on itself, it almost blends into, uh, into the rest of the resolution, making it really easy to get a seamless texture. Whereas if we would have left it square, then it actually would have generated a square border, making it much harder to clean up. So that was the reason for the gradient. Okay, everybody, that is it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, like this video, and comment down below your thoughts. And also, too, if you have other ways you create alphas, I would love to hear them, so comment those down in the comment section below. Again, guys, thank you so much, and as always, have a great day and happy sculpt. See you guys later.